Hello, friends, colleagues, students, C sharp learners, and YouTube world. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD. This is the part two of reading from and writing to text files in C sharp and multiple record processing, part two. If you've not watched part one, uh, please watch that first before watching this. So in this video, we are going to show you the kind of file we are going to process and how to process a file. First, we are going to do a program for single record. And after having done that, we can show you how quickly, by selecting a certain portion of that program and wrapping it up in an outer loop, we can process a file that has multiple records. Okay, so anytime you want to process a text file, input file, and write to output file, you need to really know extremely well the structure of the input file because there is no prompt from the computer to you to enter the data. And that deficiency is completed or made for by understanding the structure of file and then coding the program according to that. So first of all, let me show you the file. Um, actually, the fastest way would be like this. The file we are going to work with is this type. The first line of each record has first and last name of the student, then number of tests and score in each one of them, and all scores are out of 100, and last value is the sentence value. And then the next student record, and there will be some records which will have no tests, like this person philosophy took no tests. So we have to be able to process those two. Okay, anytime you have a sentinel value, you should quickly understand that something like this is processed by the sentinel control loop. So first we'll write a loop, which will be a sentinel control loop, and then that will allow us to process a single record. For example, if I use this file, it'll just process that one, and then or this type of record, I should be able to process either one of them, either this one or that one. And then once we have perfected that program, we can wrap a portion of it into a outer loop, which is end of file control loop. And that can then process all the records, okay? So that's the idea, all right? Uh, once again, I will not write program interactively. I will just display various parts of it. Okay, so since we are reading from an input file, as I showed part one video, I get the full path to the input file. And if full path is the file name, I create a stream reader object, which is new stream reader file name. So this object now is successfully bonded to the input file. Now it's ready to be read, okay? And don't forget to use system.io. If you don't use that, you will not be able to use the stream reader, okay? Here, I want to count, like, if I have a file like this one, that how many students got an A, how many got B, C, D, and F, and those are the variables defined here, like number of students who got zero, sorry, number of students in the file, number of students who got A, B, C, D, and F, and I'm going to compute those based on the program. And then this string here is defined because all the output that I'm going to make either to the console or to the output file, I'm going to concatenate that into this output string here. So one thing is sure, no matter what happens, uh, each time I process one student, I should increase number of student by one. So I do the num student plus plus right here up front. 
and then as you can see from the file the first row has the name of the student first row first record so I use the sr.readline method to read the student name so name variable now has the student name now I'm gonna be doing some outputting also so as I have some piece of data and I need to output it to eventually I have to output to console or file I f start just format that so here's just a uh, line and then to the output string I add string dot format and I say hello name argument zero means name will be plopped here so it'll just say hello students name so for tooth suite it will say hello tooth suite okay then once I've read that next line is the first score of the student notice first score could be a real value or like for philosophy it could be a sentinel value and we have to be able to process either this type of record or that type of record so while we are processing some real students we cannot forget the students who didn't take the test also we have to process be able to process the, them as well okay so I read the first score using this code here and since all the scores are integer type I parse that into in type but understand first score could be like this a real value or this one or a sentinel value for the score okay sentinel value is that I cannot give anybody negative in the test so that's that is a sentinel value so I have to be able to process either this type of data or that type of data so we take care of this type first so it says that if score is negative less than zero then we just add to the output string that you did not take any test so your grade is not determined because in that case we will not be determining the grade otherwise we have something to process otherwise we have something to process could be one score could be more than one score so what we need to do is we need to find sum of all the tests divide that by number of tests and get the average and then based on the average we give a grade to the student so that's done through this loop here but it's very important here in this loop we are summing all the student test scores so we define a sum variable and we define a number of test variable understand these are accumulators sum accumulates sum of all the tests sum of all these uh, num test accumulates number of tests so it will count one two three accumulators always have to be initialized before they do their job of accumulation so if you forget to initialize those you are in big trouble okay these others kind of more optional but this has to be initialized and this has to be initialized because th those are accumulators used inside the loop so while the score is greater than or equal to zero I sum up the current test score I increase the number of tests by one and then I ask for the next test score I read the next test score so in case of tooth suite it will read 87 87 greater than zero is true so I will enter the loop I'll add it to the sum which was zero so first iteration of the loop sum will be 87 number of tests was zero so it will become one and then I read the next score and next score is 76 so that is greater than zero also so I enter the loop again and I continue the process until I read a sentinel value like minus one for uh, tooth suite when that value is read minus one greater than zero is false so I exit the loop so in that at that time I've summed up all the scores and I've counted how many tests are there okay in that case I can find a real average and to find the real average I need to cast one of them sum or num test to double type because don't forget sum is integer num test is integer if I do simply sum divide by num test I will rule the fractional part because that's the integer division so I cast a double type so I get the real average and then I want to do grading based on the rounded average so I use the mat dot round fo formula uh, function method and I pass it the real average okay uh, so b 
based on rounded average, then I can determine a grade. If rounded average is greater than or equal to 90, the grade variable set to A. And number of students who got A increased by 1. And that's pretty much I do for B, C, D, oops, D, and F. And in each case, I increase the accumulator variable for that number of students getting that grade by 1. OK? And then I print everything. I print number of tests using string dot format. By the way, this if and else we have done before. So if you watch one of the previous video, you will see it. And I print the sum and print the real average, rounded average, and the student's grade. And basically, this is where processing of single record is completed. So it's really from here to here. If I run my program right now, it will process one record of either this type or that type correctly. OK? So once I have that, it's pretty easy for me to take this code and surround it with end of the file control loop. OK? And you can really use a feature called surround with feature. Uh, and there's a while loop here. So if you do that, you will end up pretty much with this here. And SR dot end of stream is true when I have read the last character in the file, end of file character. Negation of that will be that while not, OK, when SR end is true, not true will be false. But when it's false, not false will be true. So it will keep processing data until end of the stream is reached. And let's see, yeah. And I have to comment this in also. Now my program is ready to be run with multiple records. So let's just run it. Oh, OK, I forgot something. I have to do this. And after that, I add to the output string the number of students that had A, B, C, D, and F. And then I ask for the output file, full path, create a stream writer object. And this output object, I also print to the output file as well as to the console. So we'll run that. So I go back to my. give it the full path to the out input file name. And notice all the records have been processed. And output to the console is complete. Then it's asked ask me for the output file path. I can just give anything out 22.txt. And this is the end of the program pretty much. We can look at the output file now, which is right here, out 22 txt. And it has all the same information that we printed the console. OK? So these are the key steps for writing a program that can read and process multiple records uh, from a file and write to an output file in C sharp. My students will have a copy of this code. Uh, others you can request to me. If you need leave your email address with this video, I can email it to you. Okay? With that, thank you from Dr. Singhal for watching and I'll see you in future videos. Bye.